In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your batch and single lister settings. First, you'll go on the left hand side of the navigation area down to where it says batch dash single lister settings. Then you will choose the marketplace that you're selling on. There's US settings and UK settings. All right, all of the steps are clearly defined. You have steps one, two, three, four, and five. So the first thing you'll want to do is get your eBay keys. If you are previously a Hydrolister version one member, then your keys should already be filled in as is all of your settings. Um, if you are a brand new user, all you have to do is come in here and click this link that says get here for your eBay keys. It will prompt you to log into eBay. So you'll click this link here that says please click here to be redirected. You'll open up a new tab, log into your eBay account. On the screen, all you're going to do is click Agree to Grant Hydrolister Access to eBay. Once that process is finished, it will tell you that the authorization has successfully completed and that it's now safe to close your browser. So you can close this tab. You'll return to your Hydrolister settings, scroll back down and go back to your batch single lister settings. Click on US or UK, whichever one you were working on. All right, and then at that point, your eBay keys should be filled in. If you are a SKU grid user, then all you have to do is click get here to get your SKU grid remote key. If you're already logged into SKU grid, it will take you to the appropriate tab. If you are not logged in, you will log into your SKU grid account and then click on settings, then click on remote API. If there is a key here already because you've already set this up, then just copy and paste that key into your Hydrolister settings. If you do not have a key here, you will click generate new, then save settings, then come back to remote API and copy the key, and then paste it into your Hydrolister settings. It's very important to note that you have to save the same exact key in SKU Grid and in Hydra, otherwise your items will not carry over to SKU Grid for tracking and repricing. All right, and you want to be sure that you're not carrying over any extra white space or anything like that. After you're done with your keys, just click Save. That will save the settings and refresh the page. Next, you'll move on to step two. All right, business policy users, where it says use seller profiles, you'll click yes. If you are not a business seller, a business policy user, you leave it at no. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And you'll see that there are three settings here for payment profile, return profile, and shipment profile. They'll all default to none if you've not set this up before. So you'll want to click Get Update Profiles. That will refresh. And then you select the return profile, the payment profile that you want to use, the return profile that you want to use, and the shipping profile that you want to use as a default. They can always be changed individually when you list your items. Okay, next you're going to want to set your default listing quantity. All right, so put whatever number you want here to be your default. Next, you'll select your listing duration. Um, don't do one day. I don't believe that one day will be a viable option. But um, so normally uh, as a retail arbitrage dropshipper, you'll do a 30 day listing or a good till cancel. All right, next you select the country that you are selling in. This is not the country where you are located. This is the country where the item is located. So if you're selling on the United States platform, you want to select United States. If you're selling in UK um, and you're in your U UK settings, then you would select United Kingdom. All right. You're going to leave sales tax flat rate blank because it doesn't even allow you to do that. Um, if you're using the eBay sales tax table, then you can select yes. If not, select no. All right, and there's a button here that says show more because there are some additional settings that you can configure. 
dispatch time is the same, it's handling time. Here you can select if you charge a restocking fee or not, but also remember that if you are a business policy user, your restocking fee would be included in your shipment profile. All right, and uh, here you'll select if you want to use Global Shipping Program or not. This is if you've already opted into eBay's Global Shipping Program, you would select yes, and that will include it on all eligible listings. If you are not opted into eBay's Global Shipping Program or do not want to use it, you want to select no. But again, if you are using business policies, business policies override these settings, so you would want to select the appropriate policy that has that in it. Also, if you're set to not use business policies or seller profiles, uh, you have this use seller profile set to no. Um, as I was saying, you need to have your PayPal email address filled in. All right, and then when you go to the bottom, you'll, you'll see where you set your dispatch time, which is your handling, returns, return shipping. All these options need to be filled in. All right, and if you have, you need to set a shipping service. So you have UPS Ground uh, would be for the United States. For UK, um, you can choose other courier, three days. Um, the options are totally different with UK. Um, you'll set your shipping service cost for most people will be zero dollars, um, zero here for additional cost, and free shipping, yes. Now, eBay started doing a new thing and they started kicking out shipping service number one. So if you only have one shipping service set, uh, you'll get an error message saying that you need to set a shipping service um, and that local pickup is not allowed. So to get around that, you need to also make an identical shipping service number two. OK, so everything that you had for shipping service number one, just duplicate that here. So I can click show more to collapse that back down again. All right, next you're going to move on to step number three, which is setting your final price formula. This is how your listing price is determined. You can set it here. These will be your, this will be your default formula, and you can override this on an individual basis per item if you would like or per batch. So um, the first thing is vendor tax. If you use suppliers that charge sales tax more often than not, then you will probably want to factor in vendor tax into your calculations, otherwise you will come up short. So uh, sales tax usually varies anywhere from five to 9%. So any number in between that range would help uh, give you some cushion. Um, of course, you cannot determine sales tax until you know where the item is being shipped to. So some people are more comfortable using a number like nine, which is usually the most sales tax you'll be charged. And some people use 10. So enter whatever number is good for you. If not, enter zero if you don't want to factor in vendor tax. Next is your margin percentage. This is the profit that you want to bring home. So if an item is $100 and let's say you wanted a 10% profit margin, that means that after fees, you still want to bring home $10. Okay, so that's just for easy math. Um, it's not a, a rule or what you should be putting here. There is no right or wrong. You have to come up with a right pricing strategy for your items. But let's say you wanted uh, your margin to be 5%. You can put that here. Um, some people, fixed margin is in a dollar amount. So adding a fixed margin will give you profit to take home in a dollar amount in addition to your margin percentage. All right. If you're using margin percentage, it's not totally necessary to also add a fixed margin, but some people do. Um, your minimum margin, that is going to be the lowest amount of money in dollars or in pounds if you're in the UK that you're willing to accept for the item if it should sell. So a lot of people um, at a minimum want to make two or three dollars. So it's totally up to you what you enter into these boxes. Your PayPal fees for most people are 2.9% and uh, there's a 30 cents transaction fee for PayPal. That would go here. Um, there are situations where people have uh, international PayPal fees. So their PayPal fees might be more like 3.4%. 
And there's also people that uh, have things like PayPal working capital loans, and you need to account for an extra maybe 10 or 20% uh, added on to your PayPal fees. So, you know, in that case, someone might put 13 here uh, so that they had enough money to pay those fees and still make a profit. All right. So I'm just giving you some basic scenarios of how these numbers could change. Your eBay fee percentage. If you have an eBay store, then your eBay fee percentage is always nine. If you do not have an eBay store, then your fee percentage is 10. So when I say have a store or a shop, um, you're paying eBay a monthly fee to have a shop so or a store. So if you're not paying a fee every month uh, for eBay to have a store, you want to um, enter 10 here. If you do have a store, then you want to enter 9. Manual override. By default, most users should have this set to no. This is an advanced function. If you have this set to yes for any reason, it will cause Hydrolister to ignore anything that you enter here to create your formula, and it's looking for a long formula written out from you. So if you did not do the right thing down here in creating a formula, then your numbers are going to be wrong. So you want to leave this at no and allow Hydrolister to calculate and create the formula for you. So you can see, uh, based on the numbers here, there is a long formula that's written out and you can test this formula. So you would enter a value. So let's just say the supplier cost is $100. Hit OK. This shows me that using this formula, Hydrolister would price my item at $130.25. All right. Now let's take a, a $10 item, for example. A $10 item would be priced at $14.98 to bring me home a minimum profit of $2 um, or 5% margin, whichever is greater. I also want to show how some people prefer working with their profit amounts in dollar amounts instead of percentages for their margins. So if you want to use dollar amounts for your profit margins instead of percentages, you will change the margin percentage to zero and change your fixed margin. So your fixed margin would be set, for example, to $2. Your minimum margin can be set to $2 as well, because at a minimum you want $2 and you're saying you want a profit of $2. So th these two should match in that case. So, um, you know, and also we would test the formula just to make sure that it would price the item how we would like it. So if you enter the starting price for the item and click OK, shows you for a $2 profit based on these formula settings, your item would be listed at $126.33. So after you've configured your formula the way you want and you've tested it, just move on down to step number five, which is your description. Here is where you create your template to be used for your listings by default. So um, for most people, if you want to disable preformatting, select yes. That will allow you to do customization to your template, like making things bold, making larger header fonts, etc. It will disable the CSS styling that Hydrolister uses normally when it scrapes the items. Um, otherwise, if you're fine with it the way that it is, select no. All right, next you choose a template. There are several different templates that you can choose from. Select one from the drop down. Okay, and as you can see, the, the template is actually changing as I make different selections. So you take a look at the, the template offerings that are here. You can select the one that works for you. If you select predefined, this is a pretty much basic template that just has the title, the bullet points, and the product description, and then the main image in it with no other language or styling. So totally up to you what you use. If you choose one of the predefined templates, you can make edits to you know, the, the language and things like that, that that are in the template. So if I want to say um, up to 40% discounts, like I can change that. You can also edit the language that is within here. So if you want to change any of the words, just put your mouse in the box and change the wording. Um, note, if you're using one of the templates that has tabs here, 
you'll have to click on source and then find where that is in the code and change that information there. So you can see here, this is the return section. So if I wanted to change any of the language in the return section, I would change it here. The next tab right here, this is like the contact us. So you can change the language here and that would change it in the template. All right, and you get there by clicking source that takes you directly to the HTML. Now, let's say you wanted to use your own template that you've had some designer make for you. You can just leave this set on predefined, click source, take everything out of here, take whatever template code you have, copy that, and you paste in that HTML here, hit source again, and you will see your template show up. And what you'll need to do, you see how this says your item's title, you will need to take that out and enter the title tag. It is very important that you put these tags, these are called Hydra Merge tags, and what these tags do, they're right above the template box. So you have one for title, one for feature bullets, one for product description, and one for the main image these tags will insert that information from your supplier wherever the tags are present. So here within the body of the um, listing, I would want to put in the um, feature bullets and put it enter a space, maybe two spaces and put in product description. You know, you can, um, you can also put things above and below it. So if you wanted to do key features and make that bold, you could do that. And down here, you could say product description, however you want to do. I'm just trying to show you how to quickly um, edit your own template if you had one and use it, get it configured to work with Hydralister. So that's all you would have to do is make sure that you have the tags inserted where you want that information to go. So, and as far as an image, let's say I wanted to put my, my main image in here. I'm gonna put a couple of X's here. I'm gonna flip over to source and I'm gonna find these X's. That would let me know where I need to put my code. I'm gonna grab the, the HTML code for the image. So I would copy this whole code from bracket to bracket and paste it in here where you see the X's. All right. You flip back to source and that you'll see a little thumbnail for the main image. That is where the main image will go. Okay. And then click save. And that's how you configure your batch and single list or settings.